I'll start by pointing out components, explain their operation, then touch on some highlights for testing the system. Components of the system include a cruise control mode switch, which I'm sure you know includes an on-off slide switch, a set coast push button switch, and a resume accelerate slide switch. The TCC cruise release and brake light cruise release switches mounted near the brake pedal lever are used to disengage the system when the brake pedal is depressed. The vehicle speed sensor and the vehicle speed sensor module supply vehicle speed information to the cruise control module. The cruise control module is normally a unit replacement. However, a quick look inside will help you understand the characteristics of the electromotor system. The module houses the cruise control electronics, the stepper motor, a gear set and clutch, and the connecting strap. The cruise control stepper motor utilizes three switching circuits to activate three separate sets of field coil windings. Energizing a coil pulls the poles of the armature into alignment. The armature rotates a third of a turn to align as each coil is energized. Because the coil sets are individually switched, the motor can be rotated as little as one third turn, held motionless or reversed. When the stepper motor rotates, the connecting strap and cruise control throttle cable move the throttle to maintain, increase or decrease vehicle speed. The system can open the throttle up to 80% of wide open throttle. The system is disengaged when the brake pedal cruise release switches are actuated or when the system is switched off. Here's a customer complaint you may have come across. Cruise control makes a clattering noise when the system is switched off at the control lever. Well, here's the deal. When the customer uses the brake to release cruise, the stepper motor unwinds to gradually release the throttle. But when the customer uses the on-off switch to release cruise, the gear clutch in the module disengages immediately. If the throttle is open wide enough at the time, you get a throttle slapback like this, which can be heard by some customers. Assure your customers that this is a normal condition. Two versions of the stepper motor system are on the road. 1991 and 92 Roadmasters, up to VIN sequence number 21429, use the first system. Roadmasters after that breakpoint use the second system. In first design systems, the brake switches are wired in series and, when actuated, open to remove power from the module to disable cruise control. Second design systems can be quickly identified by this yellow wire at terminal G. Second design systems provide a redundant method of detecting brake pedal movement. One brake switch removes power from the module, while a second brake switch completes a brake input circuit. The module's current limiting resistor maintains about zero volts on the circuit, not enough to illuminate the chimsel. When the brake pedal is pressed, the brake light cruise release switch closes, sending full battery power to the module and to the chimsel. Anytime the module senses power above 7 volts, it disengages cruise control. Also, if the module senses that current is not being pulled low due to an open or intermittent, the cruise control module won't engage. Even a trip from a local lumber yard won't let cruise control engage because this circuit is not completed. And that's how the system works. Anytime the system doesn't work, that's your cue for a road test to begin the diagnosis. Remember, the Roadmaster Service Manual is your official source for diagnostic procedures. But let me highlight some tests you can perform rather quickly. If you can verify the complaint, there are several tests to perform. We'll get to those in a minute. But first, suppose your road test didn't verify the complaint. That tells you that you've got an intermittent on your hands. Finding it, well, that's the real trick. So let's get started. 
Intermittent trouble can be caused by a loose or dirty ground at the rear of the right cylinder head. Perform a quick voltage drop test. Connect the meter to the terminal and the negative battery terminal for a true reading. Switch on the ignition and cruise control. You should see one-tenth of a volt or less. Anything higher means that excess power is needed to penetrate a poor ground. Remove the ground, degrease and wire brush the ground site, and all terminals. Reinstall the terminals and tighten the nut. Another potential for intermittent operation is a misadjusted brake switch. I'm referring to a switch that's teetering on the verge of misadjustment. It's okay one minute and not the next. If you have such a condition, the module thinks the driver is constantly tapping the brakes, so it won't let cruise control engage. To adjust the switches, press the brake pedal down, push both switches fully into their retainers, then pull the pedal back to its retracted position to adjust both switches. As you know, a loose or damaged terminal can cause intermittence. Slightly tug on each wire to be sure its terminal is seated. If all wires are tight, remove the connector. Carefully check all harness terminals for a snug fit with the test terminal from the test adapter kit. This is vitally important. All cruise control system connectors depend on clean, tight, and dry connections. Therefore, each terminal in the system should be inspected. Replace any bad terminals. Also be sure to inspect the connector for internal cavity damage. Another test for intermittence is to check the power and ground wiring to the cruise control module. Remove the cruise control module connector. Attach a voltmeter between terminals F and E. You should see battery voltage only when the ignition is on. Wiggle the harness, looking for any change in the meter reading. Now, let's do another test. The mode control switch wiring routes through the steering column. Movement of the tilt wheel, turn signals, and high beam switch has the potential to pinch or cut wires, causing circuit intermittence. To check the wiring, move the meter lead from F to A. With the ignition off, then on, you should only see zero volts. Now, slide the cruise on-off switch to on. You should see battery voltage. With the switch still on, operate the tilt wheel, actuate both turn signals, and switch the high beam headlights on and off. If the meter fluctuates and intermittent in the steering column may be present, check for a stuck switch by moving the cruise control switch off. The meter should show zero volts. Move the lead from A to B. With the ignition off, then on, you should see zero volts. Switch the cruise on off switch to on. Now, push the set coast switch. You should now see battery voltage. Perform the tilt, turn signal, and high beam test again. Then release the set coast switch. Press and hold the resume Excel switch. You shouldn't see any voltage. If you do, you've got a short between the resume Excel and set coast circuits to repair. In normal operation, pressing set coast and resume Excel at the same time disables cruise control. You'll see the same results with a short between these circuits. Now, let's check the brake light cruise release switch circuit for intermittence. This is done by jump ring terminals G and F. Power should only be present on the chimsel circuit when the ignition is switched on. 
jiggle connector C405 in the left rear quarter panel area. If the chimsel blinks or flickers, this indicates an intermittent. Then, grasp the back glass lift handle and jiggle the rear glass. Watch the illuminated chimsel. If the lamp blinks or flickers, that's an intermittent. Take a close look at the chimsel contact pins on the rear door for corrosion. Any interruption prevents cruise control operation. Then, inspect the back glass contact plate, looking for leaks. Remove the corrosion, repair the leak, and retest the circuit. Buick Service Bulletin 92 916 addresses a problem where cruise control doesn't work due to corrosion at the contact pins and plate. A resistor must be soldered to the circuit to provide the ground the module is looking for if corrosion becomes excessive or if both chimsel bulbs burn out. To check out the other brake release switch circuit, connect the voltmeter across terminals D and E. This test is valid for first and second design systems. With the ignition off, the meter should display zero volts. However, when the ignition is on, the meter displays battery voltage. Now press the brake pedal. The meter should go to zero volts. Then show battery voltage when the brake pedal is released. OK. That should cover intermittent problems. Let's back things up a little bit. Now suppose that during the road test you performed earlier, the car actually demonstrated the customer's complaint. For example, check out the cruise control throttle cable. A misadjusted cable causes a lazy response, while a broken cable renders the system inoperative. To see if the cable is broken or just needs an adjustment, remove the retainer clip and pull the cable end off of the stud. If you feel the cable extend in the slightest, adjust it. If you pull it right out of the housing, replace the broken cable. Here's how to adjust the cable. Lift the cable lock and pull the cable end until the throttle just begins to open. Then, slowly close the throttle. As the throttle just closes, lock the adjustment mechanism. After the cable adjustment, perform the initial system check to verify circuit and switch functions. To perform the system check, set the park brake and start the engine. Move the cruise on off switch to off, then back to on. After at least three seconds, press and hold the brake pedal. Push and hold the set coast button and then the resume Excel switch. After 10 seconds, release the brake pedal. Engine RPM should momentarily increase. Then return to idle. If the system passes this test, you should also look at the vehicle's speed signal, which we'll do in a few minutes. For now, if the system fails this test, perform all pinout tests at the cruise control module connector using the J39200 multimeter, a jumper wire, and terminal adapter test kit, J35616. Of course, start by checking ground G104. Test for power to the module, adjust the brake switches, and perform the intermittent test as previously shown. Now, check the speed signal at the VSS module. Remember, if the Tech 1 reads vehicle speed and the speedometer looks okay, that's no guarantee that the cruise module senses vehicle speed. To check the cruise module, Isolate it by disconnecting the audio alarm module connector C222 and the power steering control module, if equipped. Then disconnect VSS module connector C1.
Back probe the connector from terminal D to ground. Switch the ignition on and then cruise control. If you don't see 5 volts, there's a problem with circuit 389 or the module. Check the module at terminal K. If you don't get 5 volts, replace the module. If it's OK, repair circuit 389. If you got 5 volts originally, reconnect the VSS module, then connect the meter between terminal D and ground. Raise the vehicle on a hoist and attach an exhaust hose if required. Connect a Tech 1. This provides you with a digital speedometer. Start the engine. Place the gear selector in drive and allow the wheels to rotate. The VSS frequency is proportional to vehicle speed by a factor of 1.1 to 1. If you don't get anything, check the sensor itself. Look for about 0.2 volts AC at 2 miles per hour and up to 100 volts AC. If it doesn't produce similar readings, replace the sensor. Something else you should be aware of is a surging cruise control condition. This is due to the stepper motor sensitivity to speed sensor variations. Remove the sensor and inspect the gear for out of round or for worn teeth. Inspect the sensor drive shaft and sensor slot for looseness. If there is movement whatsoever between these components or if the gear is worn, replace them.